The predicate for veganism is already set. We all, most of us already accept all of the moral views that are the predicate for becoming a vegan. We all believe it's wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering and death on animals. All right, so now the next question becomes, what do we mean by necessity? Well, whatever it means, whatever abstract meaning it has, if it has any meaning whatsoever, it's minimal meaning it has to be that it's wrong to inflict suffering and death on animals for reasons of pleasure, amusement, or convenience. Because if, that, if, that, if, if it's all right to inflict suffering and death on animals for reasons of pleasure, amusement, or convenience, then you've got a loophole that's now so large you can drive a truck through it. So if the, if the moral notion that we all accept, if that has any meaning, then it's got to be the case that we can't inflict suffering and death on animals for reasons of pleasure, amusement, or convenience. Okay. Problem is, 99.9999999% of our animal use can only be justified by reasons of pleasure, amusement, or convenience. It's gotta go. If, if we are at all, if we mean what we say, if we mean what we say, if we mean what we say, we have no choice. Veganism is the only rational, logical response to accepting that it is morally wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering and death on animals. best justification we have for inflicting pain, suffering, and death on 56 billion animals every year, not including aquatic animals, is that they taste good. Well, as long as you've got most of us thinking that, nothing's ever gonna change. Because that was also clear to me, as a lawyer, as a law professor, it was clear to me that animals are economic commodities as long as they're, as long, you know, I mean, as long as we have this relationship of property to property owners, as long as animals were economic commodities, Every time you try to protect animal interests, you are paying money. It's never going to work. If we really want to change the world, it's got, we've got to focus on veganism. animals have real moral significance, if animals have rights, if they have a right not to be treated as our commodities, well then that logically implies we can't eat them, we can't wear them. I mean, whatever else it implies, it, it implies you can't eat them, you can't wear them, you can't use them for, for various purposes. It is the most important aspect of your behavior. So be a vegan. Educate others, whether it's in your vet office, whether it's in a, a airport lounge where you're waiting for a flight, or whether you know, you're know you on the airplane and talking to somebody about why you have a special. Talk and educate everybody you can. Get the literature that is available on the website from the increasing number of vegan abolitionist organizations. You'll convince some, and then they'll convince some, and then they'll convince some, and it will, it, it will grow. It's a zero-sum game. Every dollar we spend, every minute, every, every dollar of resource, every minute of labor, that we spend focused on welfare regulation is a dollar less and a minute less of labor than we're spending on promoting veganism and abolition. Well, but what about the people who are never going to become vegan? You know what? Let's worry about the, those people once we've gotten everybody who will become a vegan. Once we've convinced the people who are out there who can be convinced. Once we do that, we haven't even started with that yet. Once we do that, then we'll worry about the people who aren't going to change. If we really want to change the world, it's got, we've got to focus on veganism.